Hello, in this video we're going to show you how to set up SDL on a Windows machine using the Visual Studio IDE. If you want to install it on something like Mac or in a different IDE, don't worry, we'll have separate videos covering all of that process. So first of all, you need to download a couple of things. You need to download Visual Studio. So if you just Google Visual Studio, go to visualstudio.com. And you just want to go to learn more for the Visual Studio IDE, download Visual Studio. The Community Edition is more than fine. It has literally every feature that you'll probably ever want. But if you have professional or enterprise, that is fine as well. Once you've downloaded that and installed it oh, in the normal way, that's fine. You've got that all set up. Great, fantastic. Next, you want to go to libsdl.org. Then you want to go to SDL 2.0 and then you can download the source, the runtime binaries or the development libraries as we are developing and not just releasing it at the moment. We want the development libraries. As you can probably guess, we want SDL 2. So if you just click on that and just download that and we want the Visual C++ version. I've already got it downloaded. So if I go to my download folder, I did have it downloaded. Okay, so let me just download it again. <laughs> so if I go to C++, it won't, it'll take a few seconds to download. So let me just show in Finder. Okay, that is, oh, <laughs> the download directory was somewhere else. Okay, so what you want to do is extract this folder. So I'm just going to just say extract here. And this will provide you with another folder and make sure it's the folder with all of this in it docs include lib and some txt files i'm going to rename this because i think sdl2-2.0.5 is it's not very user friendly so i just want sdl2 that way when we link it to our project and if we want to update to a newer sdl we can easily just replace the contents if you go to local disk c or what we want to do now is actually put it somewhere almost a safekeeping because we're going to link our project to it and if you have several projects they'll be linking to that one SDL folder. The benefit of doing it this way and not having let's say SDL in each one of your projects like a new copy of it is it saves space and that is well very important. So I like to create a folder in my local disk C called development in here. I'm just going to paste the SDL folder into here and now we can actually create our Visual Studio project. So if you open up Visual Studio 2015 or whatever version you have, click on new project. Now you want to go to Visual C++, WinFay 2, WinFay 2 console application. I'm going to name mine SDL tutorial. Click OK. Click next click empty project we're not going to do the security development lifecycle even though it says SDL in brackets it's nothing to do with the SDL that we're using console application click finish and before we can start coding our awesome SDL project you just need to add a file and set up your project so go add new item CPP file and I'm just going to name it main.cpp. This is the main entry point. Before we actually start coding, what we want to do is simply set up our project and link it to SDL. So right click your project, go to properties, go to configuration or configurations, platform. I'm just going to be doing it for Win32. You can do x64. If you're doing it for x64, There'll be maybe one or two things that you need to change, but they'll be self-explanatory when you get to those parts in this video. So go to C, C++. Make sure you have created a CPP file before you try and do this configuration. Because if you don't, this C for slash C++ section will not appear. It requires the CPP file to tell the IDE what sort of project it is. Then go to General. Go to additional include directories, click edit, click new, click the three dots, navigate to the SDL folder that you downloaded and put somewhere for safekeeping. Go to include, click select folder, click OK. Go to linker, general, 
and then you want to go down to additional library directories click edit click new three dots you want to go back to the SDL folder go to lib now select your 64-bit or 32-bit folder I'm doing 32-bit obviously because like I said it was, I'm using 32-bit but if you want to use 64-bit you just well use the 64-bit folder click select folder click OK go to input go to additional dependencies edit and you need to add SDL 2 dot lib and SDL 2 main dot lib click OK apply OK there's one last thing that you need to do before we can start coding is go to the SDL folder that you downloaded go to lib go to well your project type so 64 or 32 bit copy the .dll file go to your project directory go to where your cpp file is located paste it there and now we're ready to start coding so let's code a simple sdl application so hash include we're going to put io stream we're going to use the input output stream to be able to print out some errors in case something goes wrong I'm going to close that we don't really need any of this anymore so now we need hash include sdl.h we need a main entry point so int main and for this I'm going to put int argc so this is going to be the argument count char asterisk argv this is just required for sdl so just have it in there you don't need to really do anything with it now we just need to initialize SDL so if SDL underscore in it you want to use this one which is a method and it requires a parameter which is what are you initializing so you do SDL underscore in it and you can initialize audio events I'm going to keep it simple initialize everything if you know you only need a couple of things you want to make it as streamlined as possible then do that for your application if this is less than zero because errors will be negative usually negative one then something has gone wrong so we would do std c out we're going to print out sdl could not initialize sdl error and now to print out the error just do sdl underscore get error and now we're simply going to do a end line like so and that is it we just need to do a return statement so return exit underscore success semicolon and now we're ready to run our awesome SDL application so click run and you run fine there were well no errors which is fantastic nothing you know related to our project this is just other mornings and whatnot so that's it you might be thinking where's the window how would I draw to it all of that will be covered in separate videos because this is just the sort of setup video for windows once we've done all the setup process we can start handling all of the good cross-platform code such as textures such as input or creating a window that will be the first one that will be in a hello world tutorial if you have any questions feel free to post them on my education platform so not learning .co.uk. there will be a link in the description if you like this video please give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button and leave us a comment there will also be links to the libsdl folder i mean the libsdl website the github page that has all of this source code on it and all the source code from every video in this series and a link to visual studio as well and as usual thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.